Welcome back, everybody. Take a break with Stephen. Stephen Seamus. Good to see you, my friend. How's it going? It's wonderful. Every day is a good day. Uh, this one division is really blown up, right, Alex? It's a thing. I guess. People love it. Oh, my God. This West Coast Avengers, it's like off the charts. Off the charts. It's like the hottest that, I book. I think you... we should do a whole episode on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Alex, these, book, these books are up quintuple. Yeah. Like, like in, in like, yeah. it's crazy. Alex, what's going on out there? It's it's a it's a it's a seller's market, right? Yeah, sellers are making it just, it, so. Yeah. It just feels like there's a feeding frenzy. Yeah, it's like every time a show gets announced, every time a new actor gets announced, every time a new storyline gets announced, it's like the books gore. You know, gore the god butcher. It's yeah. like it's five dollars, and then in two minutes later, it's five hundred dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. So you're going to hear a lot of that today. I mean, you're going to have books that were like basically nothing. Yeah. That are just on fire. So uh, what are we talking about today, Alex? Yeah. Let's let's do the whole show. WandaVision. It's twilight time. Wanda and Vision. Aren't we a five pair? This is our home now. I want us to fit in. Oh, this is gonna be a gas. Where did you two move? <laughs> all the little, all the little bits and pieces that we have yes. to dissect. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. All right. So, what are we gonna start with? Let's talk about the the spoiler alert. But I think when this comes out, the show will be ended. Uh, but the end of the last episode, uh, White Vision. Yeah, that's the big one, isn't it, Alex? Yes. Uh, the homage cover. Uh, is this book is on fire. Uh, the last scene of the second to last episode Benito. is extraordinary is extraordinary. And there's a lot to the white vision character. It's not just, oh, he's wearing a different costume. Oh, that's the vision. That's the vision that we know. Mm -hmm. So why don't you talk a little bit about that storyline and that character and and what do you think that that means for the future of the Vision character in the MCU? I, I who knows? I mean, it, it's 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 funny because it's they're kind of they're definitely using a lot of the comic books. I mean, it, it's the the non sold version of a rebuilt Vision. Um, you know, uh, you know, a lot of people are saying you know this the way he looks at the end could be Ultron coming back since he is kind of Ultrony. Uh, but I don't, I don't see them doing that. Uh, but you know, they're taking, and, and this is why things are going so high. They're taking stuff straight out of the comics. And, and this is a big one. This is something that people have been thinking about since the announcement of WandaVision of this. Oh, could it, could it be the, you know, the reincarnated, uh, vision rebuilt? I mean, he's a robot. I mean, the soul is the stone, right? And his personality was in that stone. And when he turns gray at the end of, a uh, um, infinity war, Everybody was like, ah, oh, I mean, all I have to do is rebuild and turn it back on. So, I mean, it, it's it's a huge, it was a huge moment for like really hardcore Avengers fans. Right. But I also think that there's, there's an element to it where he's not really the vision anymore. Uh, totally. He's not I the think, vision personality yeah, yeah. that you know. And how will that affect Scarlet Witch? Right. Yeah. I mean, because here's this man, but he's not that guy anymore. Yeah, it's just a shell, a robot. Which was I mean, Ultron. it's pretty, it's pretty awesome to see how they can, how they're going to tackle this. Yes, going forward, right? Yeah, totally. So I was pretty excited about that, <laughs> um, and also the issue itself, the cover being the homage to the original Vision. Yes, here comes the Vision. Yeah, that's the other thing is not not that you could have predicted this, Alex. Uh, you know, thirty years ago. No, <laughs> that 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 this cover you know and we've said this before is sometimes it first appears like gore the god butcher he's not on the cover but then the second print or whatever has him on the cover and then that's the cover everybody wants we right. talk about this all the time yeah you couldn't have asked if you said uh give me the iconic shot give me the iconic cover what's the first appearance it, you know what i'm saying it, it's like hulk 181 it. it's yeah. like hulk 181 <laughs> you know what I'm saying? it's like they gave you the whole thing right on the cover that's it Alex, this this book is blowing up. <laughs> this book, this book was raw, was like five, ten dollars. And yeah. now it's like it's like two hundred. Yep. yep. Okay. In like a day. Okay. The book we're talking about, the big kahuna, West Coast Avengers number 45, June of 1989, 
John Byrne Avengers 57 homage cover. Mm -hmm. This was like even before homage covers were a thing. Yeah. Okay. There are, and this number is going to move up because at five bucks, nobody was shipping these off to CGC. No. Now they're going to be shipping them now. I don't know that there's a lot of high grade copies laying around that, but even nine sixes, nine fours, that too, whatever you get your hands on, take it. Get it. Yeah. I, and, and the newsstand ones are selling for double yeah. of the, of the uh, comic hobby shops. Okay. 44 blue label, 9.8s, two gold label, 9.8s. Slow. 32 blue label 9.6s to gold label 9.6s. Wow. Right now, that book is fluctuating wildly. You're seeing 1,500 plus on 9.8s. You're seeing 2,000 plus on newsstand 9.8s. 9.6s are in the $500 range. High grade raw copies are 100 plus. Newsstands are almost double that. Um, Quite frankly, because of the iconic nature of the cover, it's just so cool. Yeah. I, I almost feel like uh, just get a copy. It doesn't even really matter, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> VF, VF plus, doesn't near matter. mid, near yeah. mid minus. Doesn't matter. Get yourself a near a, a new conversation piece. Way, this is where not having shows right? really is impactful because they're sitting in boxes, Alex. They're sitting in those boxes. And somebody would have been rifling through the metros. And even if you had the heads up two, three, four months ago, like you said, yep. those boxes have not been available to you. Right. Alex, it's crazy. Stuck in storage crazy. units across the country. <laughs> <laughs> With all the Star Wars books that are going. That's like it. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Okay. So as you go through 46 white visions in the book, not on the cover, nobody really seems to care. Right. 47, he's kind of sort of on the cover. He's through the blinds. Mm -hmm. Third appearance, uh, July, um, I'm sorry, August of 89. There are 11 blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s. It's That's about a $15 low. raw book. I think what you really want to do, Alex, is you really want to get 45, 46, 47. Yep. 46 and 47 are not going to cost you that much. You might as well get the trio of books. Yeah, yeah um, definitely. So again, the they really, because the 45 is such a home run on the cover, I think that's factoring into the uh, cost because 47, he's kind of hidden behind the blinds. He's on the cover, yeah. third appearance, but like literally like $15. Like no yeah, purchase. yeah. <laughs> Get it. Got it. All right. What's next, Alex? Yeah, well, we haven't really talked about her much, but let's talk about Monica. Monica Rambeau. Another cover, another another character that's on fire mm -hmm. with two great covers. Yeah. Two great covers. 227 in particular is a fantastic cover. Totally. Again, you couldn't have written this stuff. You, you couldn't have written the storyline 30 years ago and said, oh, this is what it's going to look like 30 years later. So Monica Rambeau makes her first appearance in Amazing Spider-Man annual number 16. I'm not in love with the cover. It's okay. Uh, but it is her first appearance. Mm -hmm. uh, not, came out uh, 1982. There are 209 blue label 9.8s, Alex. There are 12 gold label 9.8s. It is an amazing Spider-Man title. They did print a decent amount of copies of those. Especially uh, 2, annuals. 000, especially annuals. $2,000 plus in 9.8. Origin and first appearance of the new Captain Marvel, Monica Rambeau. Uh, also uh, Avengers and Thing appearance there. So that's pretty straightforward, that particular yeah. book. The next two books are the books that I want to talk about. Yeah. Because I think they have way more potential. Super, super duper, super, super low pops. And you're going to start seeing this trend, Alex. When you're talking about 30-year-old books with these super low pops, forget about it. You're not getting these books. Right. Okay. Captain Marvel, Volume 2, Number 1, November of 1989. 15 blue label 9.8s, zero Ooh. gold label 9.8s. Super, super low pop. There's a great cover. Uh, she's featured on the cover. Mm -hmm. This book is, is on fire. Beautiful. $600, $600 plus. Uh, it's a Dwayne McDuffie story. Uh, Mark Bright did an unbelievable job on the cover. Not yes. a name that we've mentioned a lot on the show. 
Uh, this book is on fire. It's at 600 bucks right now with 15 pop, Alex. This book could go to the moon. I mean, maybe there'll be some more copies that come out, but yeah, uh, this is one of the books that you need to buy if you want to buy Monica Rambo. Yeah, definitely. Okay, the next one is on fire. You can't find the copy of this book. Uh, Avengers 227, January of 83. Um, it actually came out six years earlier than the Captain Marvel book. Mm -hmm. So we're a little out of order here. Uh, 69 blue label 9.8s, mm -hmm. one gold label 9.8. There's actually one blue label 9.9. .9. That's about a $200 book. I don't know why it's not more. I mean, maybe because the pop is so much higher than the other one. Yeah. But like, yeah, I would assume. But like she joins the Avengers in that issue. Yep. Uh, it recaps the history of the Ant-Man Wops lost with, with the Avengers. It's a great cover by Sal Buscema and Brett Breeding. Uh, Brett Breeding. It's a $200 book. Those two are really the two books to buy. Those are the two great covers. Buy them raw. Get nine sixes. Get nine fours. Get nine yeah. eights. Whatever you can get. Press That's out. really where it's at. Yeah. Agreed. So, so Alex, talk to us. So, so Monica Rambo. I know you said we we haven't spent a lot of time on her. Right. Uh, so Tayana's done a great, a great character Killing of her. It. Yeah. Kills it, right? We expect to see her again. And normally civilians don't generate a lot of interest, but she obviously there's a point in the series, and we could talk about spoiler alert because the series is already over. We could talk about it. Yeah. Where the eyes light up, she's the character, she's the superhero, she probably will be the superhero going forward. What do you see? Do you see her, Captain Marvel, Avengers? What, what do we see with her? I, I, this is definitely a thing, you know, in the in the terms of the industry, a backdoor pilot, if you will. I definitely think Monica Rambeau is going to be in the industry or in the in the movies and the 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 series for the foreseeable future. The character was introduced in Captain Marvel, and it was. I don't know if it was just a nod to be like, oh, you know, this Monica Rambeau, haha. But now. With the actress playing her, I mean, she was Captain Marvel to she's Photon Pulsar, and I think she's Spectrum in the regular Marvel Universe now. But in the Marvel Universe, she hasn't gone away, and I do not see her, especially now getting powers, that she's getting anywhere out of the MCU. And I have a feeling she can still be called Captain Marvel. I mean, it doesn't... Yeah, I mean, it will be interesting. Yeah, the other Captain Marvel's in space. This one could be at you know back on earth uh, you know they could both have it they she could go as spectrum i think they're going kind of down that route with you can kind of see like she was her her personalities when she was going through the thing was a different all the different kind of characters she played on the show and then absorbed it back in so i have a feeling they might go that route but i mean she's definitely going to be there and i have a feeling she'll also be head of sword we're going to talk about that in a few minutes too yes. yeah so so you don't give somebody superpowers and then just like ignore them after that. We haven't right. seen that from Marvel, right? right? Like if they're a civilian and they stay a civilian, okay, it's one thing, but then th you don't really have somebody that you've given the superpowers to. And then like, you just never hear from them again. We haven't seen that. Right. Okay, great. Uh, what do we have next, Alex? Let's talk about Scarlet Witch. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. We're going to touch on, we've talked about them a lot. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to talk about a few books that have really exploded. Obviously, the X-Men 4 has exploded, but we, you know, that's sort of a natural book. We've talked about that many, many times. There's three particular books that I want to focus on mm -hmm. because they were very closely connected to the storyline in WandaVision. Mm -hmm. And they've had particular rises of interest. Um, and it's funny because it's actually even particular covers of that particular series. So the first book I want to talk about is House of M number one. Now, there's a whole bunch of covers to that. Yeah. One, two, three. There's five different covers. The one that's exploded and the one that matters is the Casada variant cover where the yes. Scarlet Witch is breaking up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So talk about the meaning of that particular cover of it breaking up. And by the way, you're going to laugh. I own the original art to that cover. Wow. I bought it like has to be 10 to 12 years ago. Sure. I'm sure when you saw the solicits, you're like, oh, yeah, I'll buy that. The book came out in 2005. Yeah. I probably bought it in 2005. Actually, I probably bought it 15 years ago. Yeah. I didn't Crazy. pay that much for it either. You know, Scarlet <laughs> Witch wasn't that popular a character back then. No? I just saw the cover and I was like, wow, Joe really crushed it on this one. She, I think. Joe's I, all... Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. 
Yeah, jo- I mean, Scarlet Witch after House of House of M. So House of M is because the whole storyline is because of Scarlet Witch. The Avengers disassembled storyline kind of goes, she goes a little crazy. And just like in WandaVision, she uses her powers to recreate reality. But this is this is a reality where the superheroes are are like, you know, like Superman in the DC universe. They're they're revered, people love them, everybody's happy, everybody's getting what they want. Um, and and you know, towards the end of House of M, people figure it out. She she goes insane, she goes crazy, you know. Um, so you know, that might be what people are alluding to, but this cover and house of M really kind of pushes Scarlet, Witch beyond the kind of like B to C side character in the Avengers show, she's an A, she's definitely an A character. And she's been that way since house of M, I think. Yeah. And, and the, the cover was always striking to me yeah, when I first saw cover. it, you know, I will say this, uh, Casada and Jim Lee are really the top two illustrators in the business. Yeah. Uh, Joe has always been forward thinking in his covers. Yeah. He was the first first one I saw that the characters sort of breaking out of the covers where they're cropped in tight. With yeah. The, the, you know, he was the one who did this, the Spider-Man, like the Da Vinci, uh, mm-hmm. the, the Da Vinci uh, painting. He, he's always uh, been very, you know, those Wolverine origin early covers. Beautiful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Joe is always sort of uh, experimenting with new yeah. designs, new angles, not, not just going to do the same old thing. That cover in particular for 2005, I mean, that's 16 years ago. That was a very, very striking cover. Even yeah. then, at the yeah. time, if you weren't like a Scarlet Witch fan or whatever, you were like, wow, that's a cool cover. Exactly, yeah. I remember them, I remember them, them you know, getting them in, in collections and everybody being like, oh, yeah, it's a Casada variant. It's an amazing cover. Yeah. So, so um, obviously, the significance of her breaking up, August of 2005, uh, there are 74 blue label 9.8s. There are nine gold label 9.8s. They've vanished. Uh, you can't find them. Nobody wants. Nobody wants to sell that book for obvious reasons. 9.6s are selling for 350 dollars. Oh boy! Which means that a 9.8 is going to be well over a thousand dollars when they come up for sale. Yeah. That book is on fire. Okay. The next two books that I want to talk about recap the origin of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch, which were broached in Wandavision. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They went into it pretty deeply. Uh, it's not the X Men Four original uh, origin. Right. This is a retold, which is more in line with what we saw on the show. So it's Avengers one eighty five and one eighty six. Uh, so it's July and August of nineteen seventy nine. So in Avengers one eighty five, uh, you get the origin of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. These are great covers, by the way, both yes. of them. Uh, the George Perez Terry Austin covers. Unbelievable covers. Again, that definitely plays into it. Um, there are 102 blue label 9.8s on 185. There are three gold labels. That's about a 300 plus dollar book. The 186 cover uh, is part two of the origin. Uh, this one is an unbelievable cover. 50 blue label 9.8s. So it's half of 185. Zero gold label 9.8s. And that's about a $500 book, Alex. Mm-hmm. So these books are just on fire did i tell you that they're on fire alex i I think they might be smoking a little bit from being on (laughs) fire (laughs) you know there's so much to talk about now on these shows if you're doing wandavision it's like i can't wait to dive into the superman information and and the superman there's things i mean i mean winter soldier is is not that far away it's a few weeks away and then we're gonna oh you got a baron zemo baron zemo we're gonna have to talk about a u.s agent is on fire the u.s agent books are on fire already yeah. people are already anticipating yep and people i don't know if you realize wyatt russell the actor playing u.s agent is actually the son of kurt russell and goldie hawn i did not know that correct fun fact i only had one child now that i live two <laughs> all right alex's pick of the week what do you got for us alex uh... yeah i'm gonna do a pick of the week that is very very current uh, and i did one the other day as well with eniac but berserker from boom uh just hit the shelves keanu Reeves, matt kent ron garney this isn't a book that is low ordered this is i think probably one of the highest printed books in the last five years already that's not including second prints third prints what have you but obviously it's a it's a it's a matt kent book but the keanu reeves plotting already has i'm think studios fighting for it like like the the there's no way this isn't going to be 
picked up for something. It's it's the uh, you know Eternal Warrior meets uh, John Wick. It's prime for a movie adaptation. Old Guard, if you want to say Old Guard meets John Wick. These books are going to be very easy to find. They're, they're returnable, which means this your sto- your local store can order as many as he wants, and whatever they don't sell, he can just return. You know, so I'm unsure if anything other than the regular covers and maybe the the one per store Keanu Reeves signed comic will be worth more than you know even if it gets picked up there's so many books already well also I mean obviously Keanu made the main character look like himself yes. yeah so you know if he's attached to a project uh and you've already got sort of the the, the book that you need to you know create the project mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes it very easy for a studio executive to say, "Oh, Keanu, you're going to star yeah. in this. <laughs> right. Oh, Keanu, you're ex- going to exec produce this. Right? Okay, we can we can greenlight that, right? Like, yeah. and that's you know. So I think that's pretty much a sure bet. I think it's pretty much a sure thing. Uh, the key book is like the one in two thousand signed by Keanu Reeves. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think the, it, that one and the cover A's, just the plain yeah. regular cover A. There's so many covers out there. There's a foil. There's a blank. There's a red blank. There's so many out there. I think when push comes to shove at the end of the day, the A's and the one in 2000 will be the ones. Are you going to get uh, one of your one in 2000s from Midtown? Absolutely not. No way. No way. They won't hook you up, Alex? Before I even see it, it's out of my price range. 50% <laughs> off would be out of my price range. I don't know. Maybe you boys will hook you up over it. Yeah, I guess. All right. All right, cool. All right, what do we got next, Alex? Yeah, let's talk about Mephisto. The the, right. the maybe appearance. Maybe we got one episode left. Yeah, so I think what we've seen is that based on the past of Agatha Harkness, I think we're seeing that the stuff that's come out, we already know what's going to happen. The Mephisto stuff is already on fire. This is supposed to lead to Doctor Strange 2. Mm-hmm. Clearly, this was a bridge, uh, a bridge to Doctor Strange 2. Mm-hmm. And Mephisto is absolutely on fire. The old books are very, very expensive. Yeah. Uh, I do think there's a little bit of a gem in there, like the Marvel Tales book, which reprints the Punisher yeah. number one. Um, I, I, there's, there's definitely some good stuff in there. But even in low grades, you may, you're going to want to pick up Mephisto stuff. Yeah. So Silver Surfer number three, uh, December of 1968. There are seven blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s, 38 blue label 9.6s, two gold label 9.6s, 70 blue label 9.4s, five gold label 9.4s. There are 97 blue label 9.2s, seven gold label 9.2s, and then 126 blue label 9.0s and eight uh, gold label Mm 9.0s. In 9.6, those are about sixteen thousand dollars, right? So that's kind of out of everyone's range. But you could buy a nice seven five. I saw some clean seven fives in the twelve to thirteen hundred dollars. Oh, that's range. not bad at all. Not bad at all. Uh, first appearance of Mephisto. It's a Tales of the Watcher backup story. Uh, it's a Stan Lee story. Uh, it's a John B- John Buscema cover. Okay, and then Alex, you have Fantasy Masterpieces number three. Yeah, which came out in nineteen seventy nine. So it came out eleven years later, which is really not that long to wait for a reprint. And to me, it's like the Marvel Tales, the Punisher, uh, Spider-Man 129 book. Like, yeah. It's a really, like, if you don't have, like, tens of thousands of dollars yeah. to spend, it's a really, really nice red cover. And if you ever want to yeah. get it signed by, like, you, you know, John Bernthal or, or Tom Holland, like, yeah. like it's kind of cool. Yeah, totally. So uh, this is a good buy. It's about $75 raw. Uh, it's not listed in the pop report right now. Uh, there, So it's listed as zero is zero. A 9.8 did sell recently for $500. So CGC wow. must just have to catch up in the pop report. Yeah. But even at 500 bucks, it's a good buy. $75 is a good buy. Talk a little bit about the character Mephisto. Uh, who is the character? What do we expect to see from the character? Do we expect to see this character in Doctor Strange 2? Talk a little bit about the history of Mephisto, Alex. Yeah, I mean, he's a character that's been around, obviously, since Silver Surfer. I mean, he's, he's played with Silver Surfer. He's played around with um, Scarlet Witch, Doctor Strange, and... Most prominently recently, I think for the past 15 years, Spider-Man. So this guy can do a lot of things. One of the main things that he's done with Wanda is, and we can talk about Billy and Tommy some other time, he take he absorbs their souls. Billy and Tommy in the comic books, the, the twins, were a manifestation of Wanda's powers, as they are in the show as well. 
but Mephisto wipes them, takes that power away from her and takes them and, and, and absorbs them. So he is a major villain for Scarlet Witch in the Avengers. And then later he helps Spider-Man wipe kind of the memories of everybody because everybody knew who Spider-Man was after Civil War. Everybody knew Spider-Man is Peter Parker. He made a deal with Mephisto to wipe everybody's mind. So nobody knows. So the one more day storyline is because Mephisto uh, took everybody's, took the power away from everybody and didn't know that nobody knew who Peter Parker was. Rewrote all hey. of Spider-Man comics since then. And we expect to see him in Doctor Strange 2 or what do we think? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I, I, I think if we don't see him in this last episode of WandaVision, it's definitely a character like Dormammu was from Do- for Doctor Strange 1 who they could bring in and it's very easily explained, very easy to do. He's a demon. Right. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right, what's next, Alex? A little a little book made an appearance in, in, in an episode back in, in WandaVision that was very prominently placed. Talk about Darkhold. Yeah, and there's a new miniseries coming out also, by the yep. way, on Darkhold too. So so it, it's a very interesting uh, phenomenon. It's not a character, right? But yet again, because the storyline was sort of swiped from the comics, it's blown up. Right. Uh, we saw that happen with some of the Thanos storylines. Uh, but this is an interesting one. I don't remember something it's, where it's, it's like, like the a, cosmic cube. Right, right. Perfect. Perfect. Good, good one, Alex. <laughs> so uh Marvel Spotlight number four, June of 1972. Uh, there's only eight blue label 9.8s, zero gold labels. 19 blue label 9.6s, zero gold labels. 38 blue label 9.4, one 9.4 gold label. The book sells for about $400 in 9.0. It's uh, the first appearance of Buck Cowan. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the story is continued in Werewolf by Night number one. It's got a Jerry Conway story with the Mike Plug cover. Those Plug covers Oops. are unbelievable. Yes. Hey. You, you know, it, it's where it's where the artist, um, the artist work, the imagery matches the tone. Perfect, yep. right? Yep. Like the tone of Plug's art is perfect for that Marvel Spotlight book. And then again, uh, there's two more books that we need to talk about: uh, Marvel Chillers Number One, mm-hmm. October of 1975. And uh, there are 22 blue label 9.8s, zero gold label 9.8s, uh, 43 blue label 9.6s, zero gold label 9.6s. That book is about $1,800 in 9.8. Uh, that is the first appearance of Modred the Mystic. Uh, it's got a uh, uh, Gil Kane and Don Palmer cover. And then the last one is the, the Dark Hole miniseries, Pages from the Book of the Sins. Yes. Uh, the one, the that that particular book there's no pop on it um i like issue number six right because it's got dr strange on the cover yep and it's a great cover there's a five to ten dollar book if you want to get ahead of yourself do it i would do it so 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 alex what what could we expect from so what did we see from this dark hole book and what do we expect to see moving forward Assuming this is this book that we see is Dark Hole, which I, why would it not be? It would be just it'd be weird for them to rename it or do something else. I mean, this is a book of sins. This is the you know the uh, Gramora. This is you know the Evil Dead book. You know it's 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 this book that holds magic and is a one of the worst books for an evil magician to have. I mean, we saw it, 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 prominently in Ghost Rider. We saw a lot of we saw a lot of Dark Hole Ghost Rider and kind of like the mystical. Uh, era i think Ra- ruins of ravencroft was a series that just ended a few years ago it was prominent in that but this is a book in the marvel universe that is a weapon if you hold the dark hold you have power and just like the 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 uh, you know the the cube the, y- y- having this power can give somebody whatever they want so seeing that agatha has it has a book and it's very powerful I'd be it'd be weird for the, him it, not to be dark hold, but my bet is it is. You know, I, I'll tell you, Alex. You know, the, the more I think about the Sinister Six movie with all mm-hmm. the villains in it, I, I you almost feel like you would want to see a, a a movie with like Loki, Mephisto, like you know, Green Why Goblin, not? like you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows with this uh, Spider-Man movie? I mean, they supposedly Electro's back, and and you know, we, Jake Gyllenhaal might come back. Who knows? I want to see Paul Giamatti yeah. as the rhino. Yeah. That's Miss what him. I want to see. Miss him. By the way, how great is Paul Giamatti? He's the best. He's, he's so good. Just watch Downton Abbey and he's in he's in Downton Abbey, the British TV show. He's great. 
Oh, I like billions. That's my favorite. Oh, that's a good one. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, what is our final topic for the night, Alex? Yeah. Um, my favorite uh, acronym, SWORD. Yeah. And um, you mentioned it earlier, and yes. we'll get back to it in a minute. Uh, Astonishing X Men number six, December of 2004. That was a heavily printed title. The Astonishing oh, yes. X Men. Oh, yes. Oh, uh, yes. That was Josh definitely, Wheaton, definitely made yeah. a they definitely made a lot of those. Uh, uh, 200 blue label 9.8s, uh, 10 gold label 9.8s. There's actually one 9.9. That sells for about 300 bucks. It's a decent size pop. Not bad, yeah. Uh, first full appearance of the special agent, Abigail Brand, or yep. Nick Fury, and Dr. Kavita Rao appearances. Uh, it's a Joss Whedon story with, the, obviously, the John Cassidy cover. This was Cassidy Beautiful. at his peak yes. form. Uh, this was Cassidy coming off Captain America, his Captain America run was off the charts great. His Astonishing yeah. X-Men run was equally as incredible. The style and the art fit that, bur- that book perfectly. perfectly. Yes. Uh, Very sometimes cinematic. Get, sometimes yeah. you just get that winning combination. And uh, John, uh, his artwork complemented the storyline perfectly. Yeah. Alex, there's also from June of 2005, so seven months later, they reprinted Astonishing X-Men number six and they put it in the Marvel Legends Apocalypse series of the Wolverine action figure. Yeah, I remember that. Yep. It's a different cover. Those toys you could find for about 30 bucks. It reminds me of the Spider-Man 2099 white cover. Yep. And if this book hits with sword, uh, this action figure is going to f- go crazy. Heck yes. So you got to make sure that it is the Marvel Legends Apocalypse build a figure. Yep. And it's the Wolverine figure and it's the one with the uh with the uh Wolverine cover in the background. It's a yep. different cover. Yep. than the regular Astonishing X-Men number 6. They it looks like I think they, they used a cover from one of the other issues. Exactly. This on that cover. Yep. Yeah. Because it was is Wolverine very, toy. Yeah, yeah. Right, right. So it's a little unusual that they did that. Oh, right, right, because it was Wolverine toy. Right. Good, good call out. So you could <laughs> percept them. Um okay. So talk a little bit about Sword and the um, and the importance of, of that in the comic books as well as WandaVision. Yeah, so for S.W.O.R.D. in the comics, um, it, it is the, the, the sister, the brother of S.H.I.E.L.D., S.W.O.R.D. and S.H.I.E.L.D., right? It's the Sentient World Observation and Response Department. These Say guys, that five times fast. I, I, won't, uh, I, I won't do it. Um, <laughs> these guys are in charge of extraterrestrial... Uh, threats so aliens they're they're here to watch space while shield is there to watch the earth so you know this this creation from association with still in the in the in the books today um you kind of have a feeling that they wouldn't introduce it if 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 they're not going to bring it you know to fruition um one of the cool things about sword in the comics is is head by abigail brand who has green hair and has, you know, can talk all these alien languages that humans can't. She's got powers, but we haven't seen her in this. It'd be great to bring her in. And if they bring her in, that's it. The, the X-Men are definitely coming. The 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 the, the Quicksilver, a different Petro, it was just a taste. That would be the full meal. They're definitely bringing him in. And that, that would be a neat way for them to bring him in. Um, But, you know, we've had S.H.I.E.L.D. in the MCU. Now we have S.W.O.R.D. It's perfect. Makes Perfect sense. Yeah, and you, you mentioned X Men, man. I, I don't know how you recast Fassbender and uh, McAvoy. They they I, I are, agree. they are Magneto and Professor X. Like it's they not, are. It hasn't they, been it hasn't been that long. You can bring them right they embody, in. They embody the characters. I mean, I mean, I can understand. And and with the X Men too, is that they don't even need to recast the other actors. They all. could just have different X Men. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You don't and, you don't even need the other you don't still perfectly fine right although hugh may not you know portray well, wolverine again yeah. well they would you can't have an x-men without wolverine they'd have to they'd have to find a new wolverine taryn egerton maybe they do x-23 oh, that'd from, be fun i'd be into that from uh from logan yeah right i'd, I'd uh, do it okay so i think that does it for today alex that was a lot of fun we have we have a lot of stuff to cover we, we still haven't even talked about billy and uh Billy I know Billy and Tommy. We got to talk about the new Superman. We got yes. a whole boat, boatload of stuff. Uh, there's new the new reptile. There's new yep. Blue Beetle film. Oh my god! I mean, I mean, there's there's so much to talk about, but we don't want to we don't want to drone on for hours here. We want to give you a nice succinct show each week, 20, 25, 30 minutes, and and get right to the point. So, plus we got to keep you tuning back in every week. That's it. Got to come back. For All right. More. If you haven't 
If you have any questions, comments, leave them in the fields here. Otherwise, we will see everybody next week. Same bat time. Same bat channel. See you later, guys.